The TikTok ads team continues to innovate on their ad platform, and this time I think they're doing something that nobody else is doing. They're utilizing logic settings in their lead gen forms. What that means is that the form itself will change based on the answers that the user provides to a question. So in this video, I want to give you a run through of how the logic setting works in TikTok ads lead gen forms and talk about some scenarios that it might be useful for your account. Once we're in our TikTok ads interface, first thing we need to do is navigate to the area of the account where we create instant forms. It used to be a little bit more straightforward what the name was, but they've adjusted the naming and now it's under assets and all the way down at instant pages. If you saw the TikTok instant page video that we released earlier this year, you'll remember that everything now lives under this one instant experience portion of the interface, but it is a little bit hidden compared to where it used to be. So I wanted to make sure that we navigated here together so you knew where to find it. As you can see, we already have two instant forms put together for this account. And I mentioned that because for the purpose of this video specifically, I'm not going to go through a complete setup of a TikTok instant form. I'm only going to focus on the logic setting. If you want a complete rundown of how to set up either a normal instant form or an advanced instant form on TikTok ads, you can check out the video at the top of the screen right now. That'll run you through all of the other setup pieces, everything else that you need to know. And today we're only going to focus on the logic setting. So if you need to go watch that other video and then pop back over here for the logic portion and then go back to the previous video to finish out creating your instant form. But for right now, we're just gonna come over here and click create. And to keep things simple, we're gonna choose the classic form and then we're gonna click confirm. The first few sections of the form builder, we're not gonna pay a lot of attention to today, but you'll need to give it a name, choose your configuration and the language, the form type, introduction, and then where we're gonna spend the bulk of our time today is going to be in the question section down here. So let's go ahead and scroll down just a little bit. Up here at the top, you have the purpose statement, so you can enter in a little bit more information there. And then you have the personal information section where you can add in the different questions around email, name, you can add in all these different other contact information, user info, or demographic questions. And all of those will pre-populate based on TikTok information if it's available in the platform. All of those are going to be very easy questions and will not apply to any different logic settings that are available. All of the logic settings are going to come only in the custom questions that are down here in this bottom section of the question portion of the form builder. And the idea of this custom question section is for you to ask questions related to your business or to help you further qualify individual users, get more information outside of just their personal contact or demographic information. You can see down here that there is a logic setting toggle, but it's kind of grayed out. And that's because we will need to add at least two custom questions to be able to use the logic setting setting, but let's give a quick overview here. You turn on the logic setting to manage the form questions based on a customer's answer. That means that depending on what somebody answers in one of your questions, will then flow to a second or third or fourth question, or we'll just end the form right there. TikTok mentions that it's best to set up logic after you've added all of the questions. And in some ways I would agree with that, but you do need to make sure that you know what you're trying to ask before you just start creating all of these questions in here, because you do lose some functionality once you turn on your logic setting. I'm going to write this sample form as a paid media pros form. Let's assume that I am running a campaign trying to understand what types of videos our subscribers would like to see on a regular basis. So I'm going to craft my question to get some high level answers as well as some more specific ones because I can use this logic setting. So let's go ahead and add a first high level custom question. Just to make it easy, I'm gonna use multiple choice. Scroll down a little bit and let's start with the highest level question. What channel are you most interested in seeing videos for? Since this is multiple choice, I can create a handful of different answers. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. If you're curious about how I added in all of the different answers, that would be a topic for that other video. But for now, you can see that I've created answers for Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, and other. But as I mentioned earlier, I wanna have some high level information, which will be this channel, but then I also wanna know some more specific information based on the answers that people give. And this is where the logic setting will come in really handy. You'll notice that I still can't turn this on because you have to have at least two questions before you can turn that on. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and create a further clarifying question because I know that once I turn that logic setting on, I'll be able to apply it in the way that I want. So for each of these different channels, Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, and TikTok, let's assume that there are three kinds of videos that I can create. I can create videos based on conversion tracking, campaign setup, or marketing strategy. Obviously there are quite a number more types of videos that you can put together for this, but for right now, I'm gonna create follow-up questions for each of these channels based on those three types of videos. So to do that, I'm gonna come down here, create custom questions. I will then do another multiple choice. And now let's set up our new multiple choice question for Google. I think I got all of those in the same way that I said them earlier, but if I didn't, they're at least pretty close. And I still gave the option for other because again, those are three pretty high level buckets. Something might fall outside of that. Now that you've seen what this Google follow-up question is, I'm gonna do the same thing for Facebook, LinkedIn, and TikTok. I have my follow-up question for what type of Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, and TikTok videos you would like to see. And then I added in a short answer question at the end, not multiple choice, asking what other channels you prefer to see videos for in case somebody answers other for the original question around which channel they're most interested in seeing videos for. In the preview off to the right, you can see that that is going to be an open-ended answer. They can type whatever they want rather than me giving a multiple choice question. You can see down here that TikTok is telling me that I'm adding too many questions and that could impact the submission rate, which absolutely makes sense because right now I have six custom questions, but I don't have the logic setting turned on just yet because I have six custom questions available in this form, but in practicality, nobody is going to fill out all six of these custom questions. They're probably going to fill out just two. They're gonna answer the first one, and then depending on what the answer was to question one, they'll be directed to any of the follow-up questions. So to turn on the logic setting, I just need to come up here and switch this toggle. And this specific alert is pretty important depending on how complex your form is going to be. So after opening logic setting, you won't be able to adjust the order of your questions. So depending on what order you have things in for question one, two, three, four, five, and six, you won't be able to reorder those if you turn on the logic setting. To do so, you would have to then turn the logic setting off in which you will lose all of the customization that you've already added in. So make sure you have things in the right order to start. I will show you what it looks like when you revert after you've already set up the logic setting here in just a little bit, that part will come. And depending on what your questions are, you can probably get away with it, but just as a heads up, you won't be able to reorder your questions once you turn this on. I'm gonna go ahead and click confirm. So now to set up this logic flow, I'm gonna come up to the first question up here and click the pencil. You can see now that each of the different answers not only has the plus and the minus like it did in the previous setup where we could add or subtract a specific answer, but it now shows a dropdown with the different names of the questions for the follow-up user flow. And this is where we're gonna be able to apply the logic setting specifically based on somebody's answers. So what channel are you most interested in seeing videos for? If somebody chooses Google, we then wanna direct them to what types of Google videos are you interested in? So question two is the right one. But if somebody answers Facebook, we don't wanna send them to a question that asks what types of Google videos do you wanna see? Instead, we need to choose from this dropdown and say what types of Facebook videos are you interested in? The same logic applies for LinkedIn and TikTok. So down here, I will choose question four. And for TikTok, I'll choose question five. And now we have the flow set up. If anybody answers any of the individual channels for question one, they will then be sent directly to the follow-up question that applies the most. The only other option we have is for other, aptly named. And for that, we wanna direct users to the open-ended question, which is gonna be question six. So same thing, we'll choose from the dropdown, scroll down a little bit. What other channels do you prefer to see videos for? So overall, that setup was pretty easy. And the nice part is the preview on the right actually keeps track of the changes that you're making in the setup on the left. So here you can see that we're already on the custom question that I put in place. And down below, there's a privacy notice. There is not the full list of questions that we would have seen prior because TikTok now knows that all of these subsequent questions are contingent on the answer that you provide in question one. So if somebody comes over and chooses Google, you'll then see the question two has populated down below. What types of Google videos are you interested in? And then we have the answers available here. And you'll also see the other questions are down below and that just means that we need to adjust the rest of the form that we have. So we've set up all of the different answers and the user flow for what we're trying to see for question one, but don't forget that all of the other questions, two through five, 
have different multiple choice answers. And question six also has an open-ended form. So I'm gonna come up here to question two and click the pencil. And since I don't have a follow-up question to the types of Google videos you're interested in, I don't really have to send a user anywhere if they click conversion tracking versus campaign setup versus marketing strategy or other. So rather than having question three chosen here, I need to come down and just click complete custom question. And I need to do that for all four answers because currently if somebody chooses Google in the first question and then in the second question they choose campaign setup, they will then be directed to question three, which is about Facebook videos. And that's not what they answered in the first one. So I need to go through and choose complete custom question for each and every one of these different multiple choice answers. And if you're starting to understand how these logic questions work, you'll probably know that you need to do that same user flow for each of these different actions. So I would need to come into the Facebook question as well and change this to all the complete custom questions. I need to do the same for LinkedIn, TikTok, and for question six. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quick. And now all the user flows are set up properly to where if somebody chooses Google, they will then see what types of Google videos are you interested in. And if they choose conversion tracking, they will then be prompted to submit the different answer here. But the preview doesn't let you do that step. But a good rule of thumb is to always set up your logic setting and then see what the form looks like as you click through it because it will follow the different form mappings that you have over here on the left hand side. Now, as I mentioned earlier, turning off the logic setting means that you will lose all of your custom settings that you already have in place. The good news is that I don't wanna save this form anyway, so I'm willing to undo all the work that I just showed you, and you can see what that looks like. So for example, let's say that for whatever reason, you wanted to move the custom question number four up to number two. For this specific form, it really doesn't matter what order it's in. You just need to make sure that it flows properly. But if you had multiple different logic settings, it would get really confusing if you had things out of order. So again, in this setting with logic on, you can't move this form question. So we would have to turn this off We'll then get another alert from TikTok saying that we're gonna lose all of our settings and click confirm. And now that logic is off, I can move this custom question number four up to number two. If we then go back and turn the logic setting on, now that we have everything in the right order, you can see that as soon as I open this first question, all of the different mappings have gone away. This is what it means by you'll lose all of your settings. All of the questions will still be there, all the answers will still be there, but none of the mapping that you've set up to make sure that the user is flowing through the form properly will stay in place. So you'd have to redo all of that if you have to turn logic off and turn it back on. So again, it's always helpful to make sure that you have everything in the right order to start or that you can at least keep track of it in the form builder to make sure that you're mapping all of your questions and answers in a logical order. As you can see, the logic setting in TikTok lead gen forms is pretty easy to use and highly customizable, but it can be very detail oriented depending on the questions that you're trying to ask and the information you're trying to get out of your target customer. The last thing I wanna do is give you a quick list of some scenarios where I can see custom questions and the logic setting being really useful for your account. So let's hop into PowerPoint so I can put together a list and talk through them pretty quickly. I'm gonna walk through four potential examples of how you could use the logic setting in TikTok lead gen forms, just to hopefully give you some ideas. But to be quite honest, there were a lot that I could come up with, but for this video to not be three hours long, I only wanted to come up with a handful. So the first would be if you're trying to determine product preferences. Let's say that you're a car dealership and somebody is trying to make an appointment online to view a car. And let's say that somebody is trying to get in touch with you via a lead gen form to discuss a potential car. It's easy for you to use the logic setting to determine exactly what they're looking for. Maybe your first top line question would be if they're looking for a car, SUV, or truck. And then subsequent questions could be asking about different types of makes and models, different types of price points, maybe different colors, narrowing down on all the different pieces that somebody might want if they're going to purchase a car so that when they end up discussing that with you on the phone or in person, you already have all of those questions answered because of the form that they submitted online. In a similar way, you can also use it to clarify specific services. You probably noticed when we were adding some of the questions in the TikTok form that one of them is appointment scheduling. And one that I think is a good use for that with some clarifying services questions is if you're somebody like a hair salon. Now I know for a lot of guys, it doesn't take a very long time to get your hair cut, but for women, it can depending on what you're trying to do. So maybe one of your questions is, are you coming in for just a haircut? Or are you coming in for a haircut and style? Coming in for just a blowout? Or are you trying to get some other services as well? 
you can use those custom questions to flow users through depending on what hairstyle they're trying to get. And then one of your following questions can be to actually schedule that specific service. One of the things I'm most excited about is utilizing the logic settings for my B2B clients because it can be really difficult to advertise directly to enterprise level B2B decision makers on platforms like TikTok, but your lead gen form can help you qualify those specific users to make sure that you're reaching the right folks. Maybe you start off by asking the user what their job title is or what department they're in, and then narrowing down your questions on different qualifying criteria to make sure that you're reaching the right people. Now, you won't be able to really prevent anybody from filling out the form, but on the back end, you'll be able to tell much easier if somebody is the right type of fit based on the answers they've given to the questions you've asked in the form. The last example I have is these can be really useful for determining certain timelines. Maybe for the car dealership or the B2B examples that I gave, you might be curious when somebody is trying to make a decision around that purchase. That can be an additional question that you ask in the form is, are you interested in buying a car, truck, or SUV? What make and model are you looking for? What's your price range? And when are you trying to make this decision? I've had a lot of different accounts that I've worked with put together a lot of lead gen forms, and they say that they get a lot of users coming through the pipeline, which is great, but most of those users aren't quite ready to make a decision. It'd be really great if you could just simply ask what type of timeline the user is looking for, and then depending on what they answer there, having a series of follow-up questions of which way would they like you to get in touch with them, if at all, and are there any other factors playing into the decision that you can help alleviate for them. Obviously, this is not a comprehensive list of all of the ways you can use the logic settings in TikTok lead gen forms, but hopefully I've at least given you a couple of ideas about what you can use them for in your account and get you started making sure that you're asking the right questions in the right order and getting the information you need from your potential customers on the platform. If you have any other questions about the TikTok logic settings, TikTok lead gen forms, or any of the other aspects of any paid media channel out there, please feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.